Hi, Blast Pop here. I'm taking a look at Wing Leader Eagles 1943 to 1945 by Lee Brimacombe Wood, published by GMT Games in 2019. This is the second Wing Leader expansion. This expansion is specifically meant for uh, Wing Leader Supremacy, not the original Wing Leader Victories, which was the early war expansion. This flushes out additional forces, aircraft, gives you a campaign, uh, gives you some additional scenarios, upwards of 20 plus scenarios, um, a really tight little package that gives you a lot of value for the money and a lot of gameplay if you choose to play this through. Uh, includes, um, actually says 23 new scenarios, including Budapest, Leyte Gulf, Tali in Hatala, Rabul, the Kuban, Operation Bagration. Um, so what you get is, is a rules book, uh, scenario book combination, um, and it weighs in somewhere around 40 pages. Um, only the rules portion is numbered. Okay. Following the format of the other games in the series, you have your rules in the towards the center binder, and off to the left and to the right, you have additional clarifications, explanations, designer notes, um, further things to help edify you during the course of learning the rules. I like the system very much. It was one I first saw first pioneered years ago by Victory Games and some of their titles, and. I like it very much. These uh, campaign, which these rules here are for, are for Fortress Rabul. It's a two-player campaign game, but having examined it, it looks like there's a fair degree of solitaire suitability because the information is all available and the decision process is sequential. So you have a campaign set up. You have your uh, summary sequence of play. First, you determine your weather. Uh, Japanese receive reinforcements, raid planning step, the American decides if they're going to raid, what they're going to raid, and with what. Do the raid step, the Japanese decides whether or not they're going to respond. Uh, so presumably, if the Japanese just lets the Americans uh, bomb and conduct a campaign as they wish, uh, the Americans will probably win. So the Japanese must kind of plan to intercept where they think they can have the most impact uh, from the American forces. And then it goes on from here in the sequence of play, explaining what it is in the order that you need it. Special rules, setting up a, a raid scenario. And the way you do with the campaign scenario is, is once you've generated the battle, you then go forward and play the scenario on the battle board as you would normally f play any other scenario given the particular situation um, for the scenario so in essence it becomes not only do you have an interesting strategic overlay but it gives you a reason to fight certain scenarios and basically gives you a scenario generator now this campaign differs greatly from the Kiev 1941 scenario beyond the forces and combatants involved, obviously, but how it's actually done. Um, so Lee Brimacombe Wood has definitely um, not cheating when it comes time to coming up with a campaign. He's actually coming up with something that is representative of the campaign it's trying to, rep to um, represent and uh, not just trying to shoehorn something into because it's convenient. Then you have your scenarios, Three Days of the Grief, or Grief, The Last Samurai, Disaster of Relato, Schlachtenflieger. Um, so you got all kinds of scenarios. you got Americans, Japanese, German, Soviet. I'm partial to the German, Soviet scenarios. Um, just can't get enough of them. Uh, Over the Oder, 1945, near Berlin. Uh, Ace is high, more Soviets, um, Finns versus Soviets, British, Germans, 
and all this, you know, scenarios. There's a nice, typically in the scenarios that come with the games and, and what we've seen as far as there's been a nice uh, divergent of scenarios. Simple, complex, uh, something that is interesting beyond what the, the forces would indicate. Um, so th there's a, an awful lot of gameplay here. Now the scenarios in the entire series probably you know between the expansions the base games from c3 guy magazine and available elsewhere you're probably totaling somewhere up near 100 or more scenarios so there, there's plenty of of gameplay options here and from my experience the gameplay even within a scenario varies quite a bit depending on how, how the luck of the draw in terms of getting tallies and spotting the enemy and the outcome of of of, of any, any given battle. So there's quite a bit of variability within, within each scenario. So each scenario should give you at least a couple, if not more gameplays, um, before, you know, you want to move on to something else and there's plenty of something else to move on to. So there's a lot of, a lot of goodies here. Um, and then finally last couple scenarios. And then which ADCs do you use depending on the forces you have? And there's some, this is a nice way of being sure you have the right ADCs for the scenario in question because there's so many different locations that, that they're available from with similar like a P51. Which P51 do you use? There's several versions and iterations as an example. Well, probably not the best example. A one sided campaign card. Gives you a sequence of play, so you don't have to follow the rules book. The weather, cloud cover, sun position, poor weather. Um, nice and handy. New counters. They're the brown core. They're reasonably thick. And one sheet of counters. And, you know, you have all kinds of forces from Americans to Japanese, Germans, some additional ground targets such as the cruiser in the left-hand corner there. Finns, I believe, Swedes. There's uh, some new forces for Sweden, the minor forces, which is kind of cool. And then you have counters for the campaign game and additional markers for your basic game anyway. Then you have, I believe, three sheets of aircraft data cards. And they, as you can see, they're, they punch pretty well. They're already falling out. Um, basically, this tells you how your aircraft operate. And then any ex ex uh, a little bit of history, which is nice, if you don't know a lot about the particular aircraft in question. And then also some variants. And they're counter material. And they, they're pretty good in terms of thickness. Um, so with that, you had the, the Yak-9, and they're going to continue to fall out, so we'll just deal with it. The Greif, uh, the ME-210, the Comet. I want to give that a go because there's new rules for the Comet and how it's deployed and used in the game. Tupelo F-2, Lakovitin-7, Yak-3. The HS-129. And um, you don't even have to punch these out. Please feel free to pause the video to look at something in detail for a little bit longer. The Tojo, the Nick, the Lily, the Mosquito, the Barracuda, the Firefly, the Helen. And the KI 100A. Again, the history and variants. And the last sheet of ADCs another version of the Mustang, the Mitchell, the Skytrain. You got three Swedish. 
B-18, the B-17, not to be confused with the American B-17, the J-22, the FM-2 Wildcat, the P-47M Thunderbolt with the, the cool bubble canopy, and finally, the backside of the same. Included is, is a fairly thick cardstock uh, Fortress Rabool map, uh, campaign record. Uh, you have your the Japanese interceptors. You have American fighters. You have the B-25s and the American B-24s. The American allocates them, and the Japanese responds. And then you keep track of your weather, your campaign track, the number of turns. Uh, until one side or the other wins the the game. The area representative of Ron Rabul of the New Britain, St. George's Channel. And then you have an explanation of the sortie tracks for the Japanese, as well as for the American. So both sides sit in opposition to each other on this 11 by 17 map and then fight their battles out as they occur. A lot of good gaming here. No question. This has been a component overview of Wing Leader Eagle, try that again, Wing Leader Eagles, 1943-45. to 45. This has been Blast Pop. Please like, comment, and above all, subscribe. Bye.